Greetings, I'm Professor Hobo, and welcome to another Hobo Technos product review. Ever since Blue Eddy discontinued the EB150 a few years back, there's been a big gap in their product lineup in the 1000 to 1500 watt hour range. You have the 700 watt hour EB70, and then this large jump all the way up to the 2000 watt hour AC200P. Finally, after a lot of feedback from their customers, Blue Eddy has released their new Back to the Basics AC180 power station in the United States with 1152 watt hours of lithium iron phosphate, a honking 1800 watt inverter, and check it out, no touch screen. But is it any good? Let's find out. As for what's inside the AC180, it carries 1152 watt hours of lithium iron phosphate batteries rated at 3500 cycles to 80% capacity. As for size and weight, it's 13 by 12 by 10 inches and only weighs 35 pounds. As for the display, it offers a color LCD that shows input and output watts, time to charge and discharge, and battery percent with icon. Unlike a lot of other models in the upper end range of Blue Eddy, this does not have a touchscreen. As for the output, it's an 1800 watt pure sign inverter through four 15 amp outlets. As for ways to charge, there are the standard three. First from AC power at a maximum of 1440 watts, good for a zero to 80% charge in only 45 minutes. The AC180 supports 500 watts of solar maximum at 10 amps from 12 to 60 volts meaning up to two large solar panels in series for a full charge in about three hours, not too shabby. Finally, you can charge from 12 or 24 volts, topping up in about 10 hours or five hours respectively. As for 12 volt outputs, you get a single cigarette lighter socket output, good for 10 amps. And that socket is regulated at 13.6 volts. As for USB outputs, you get four standard USB ports and a single 100 watt USB power delivery output. Note, you cannot charge this unit from USB. Now as for wireless charging, Blue Eddy does offer a 15 watt wireless charging pad up top as standard on most of their power stations. Now as for remote control, you can remotely control the AC180 through Blue Eddy's Bluetooth app and it does offer a 20 millisecond switching UPS feature meaning you can have sensitive devices plugged into this and if the power goes out while it's plugged in, the battery will simply take over. Now as for the warranty, Blue Eddy does offer a class leading five year manufacturer's warranty on this product. And of course I took the AC180 here into my secret laboratory where I performed all kinds of crazy experiments on it, including yes, of course, a double fisted bang, bang. battery capacity test. As for the results of the DC battery capacity test, it scored 1,039 watt hours out of 1152 for a whopping 90%. The results of the AC battery capacity test were pretty much identical. It scored 1,030 watt hours out of 1152 or an amazing 89%. These are fantastic numbers and it seems as though Blue Eddy's latest offerings are faring much better on the capacity test than their older models. One of the reasons for the better DC numbers on this device in particular is because they remove that high output DC circuitry and touchscreen interface that they have on the aging AC200P. That saves quite a bit of power. No doubt they're also using a more efficient processor inside, and they've had a few years now to really tweak that firmware. Pure sine wave check under load. I have this running under a full 1800 watt load. Let's look at the sine wave. So the sine wave looks perfect, and we're pulling 120 volts at 60 hertz. Now next is the inverter capacity test, where we're gonna push this 1800 watt pure sine inverter to its absolute limit. So right now I'm pulling about 1760 watts. Let's just keep cranking it up until the thing shuts off. All right, there we have it, 1980 watts, almost 2000 watts, 2200 watts, 2400 watts, and it shuts down. 
So 2400 watts for a few seconds, not too bad. So let's go ahead and move on to the sustained cooling or heat soak test where we run this thing at or above its limit for at least five minutes to find out does it do anything crazy? Does it start smoking or drinking or making funny smells or calling its mother names or throwing rocks or TPing your neighbors? Don't expect any of that from the Blue Eddy, but we have to test it anyway. So I'm gonna go ahead and start this test at 2000 watts, even though it's only an 1800 watt inverter to see, can it make it to five minutes? Now the worst thing that could happen is it should just shut down and say overload and then we try it again at 1800 watts. And there we go, 2000 watts. Let's go ahead and start the timer and we'll come back in five minutes and see, is it still running? All right, we're back. We made it exactly two minutes at 2000 watts before it shut down. Okay, so I'm gonna back it down 100 watts down to 1900 and perform the same test and see if we can make it to five minutes. All right, crazy enough, exactly at the two minute mark, it shut down at 1900 watts. So we're gonna back it down to 1800 and reset and make sure it can at least handle its rated 1800 watts. Okay, we reset the clock, we're running 1800 watts. Let's see if it's gonna finish. All right, here we are, the magic five minute mark. Running at 1800 watts, it passed that test with no problems at all. So while we have the inverter at maximum, let's go ahead and test to see what the decibel level is of the inverter fans. We're doing this from about a meter away. So it looks like 55 decibels. It is a little on the loud side, but it's not too bad. It's not an unpleasant sound. It's just a little loud. I'm afraid you're just too darn loud. Next place. Max charge rate test. This is where we determine how much power can we push into the Blue Eddy AC150. Now this is via AC, DC, solar, and USB if it supported it. Now I go into the app and it says there is standard turbo and silent mode. I do have this on turbo mode, so it's the fastest charging mode possible. Makes the most noise, uses the most power. But we're getting a pretty impressive 1450 watts into the AC 180. See right there, 1450 watts. Okay, next we're gonna do DC charging. So we're gonna start with 12 volts. We just plug in the eight millimeter and I have an adapter here going to this variable voltage charger. This charger can output 20 amps and you'll see here, like most power stations, it limits the input to eight amps. So you don't blow the fuse in your car. Now it looks like it's charging at around 90 watts. So that's fine for 12 volts. So at 22 volts, we're still pulling eight amps for 162 watts. Let's take it out to 24 volts. Now let's assume that you have a 24 volt system in a vehicle. How fast could you expect to have this thing charge? It's still limiting itself to eight amps and you're now able to charge at about 185 watts. Okay, let's take this up to two solar panels in series. Now I'm doing a reset on this because once in a while, if you don't reset, it doesn't tell the MPPT controller to reset. So basically I wanna make sure that we're getting accurate results. It's now 46 volts at 9.6 amps for 433 watts. That sounds a lot better. I was getting concerned there for a moment. So you got two solar panels in series. You can expect it to charge somewhere between 400 and 450 watts. Now let's go ahead and crank this up to the maximum 60 volts because that is the maximum that the Blue Eddy supports. And there it is, it hard caps you at 500 watts. So let's go ahead and see, can it take any more volts? It's not gonna hurt it if you go over slightly. We do it slowly. We're waiting for this number to go to zero. So we can do 62 volts, three, there we go, it's 64 volts. It drops out and that's what you expect. Little bit of leeway, not too much. So if you go a little bit over the 60 volts, VOC on your solar panels, it's not a big deal. Okay, now the next question is gonna be, since it overloaded, we put too much voltage into the Blue Eddy, it shut down saying, hey, that's too much solar voltage. It's blinking DC and it says overload. Will it automatically reset itself or do you have to manually reset it? Now, modern power stations should automatically reset. So let's bring it down to under 60 volts. I just heard a click. And there we go, it's actually solar charging. You can see it's pulling power and it's going right back to charging. So that's very good to know. If you go a little bit over on the voltage on your solar panels, it will shut off, automatically reset as when the voltage comes back down and go ahead and charge again. So it's a completely hands-off situation. So what about noise levels while charging? Now, the AC definitely makes noise. We're on turbo mode, let's see how loud it is. It doesn't seem as loud as the inverter running, but let's see how loud it is. 
So 49 decibels in turbo mode. Now let's go ahead and switch this to silent mode and see if the fans actually completely turn off or not. Okay, I now have the Blue Eddy on silent mode and it's actually not silent. The fans are still running, they're just running in a reduced capacity. So 44 decibels, significantly quieter, but not actually silent. Now let's try the solar charging. Does it make noise while you're charging it with solar? All right, we're gonna test this on maximum solar. So we're gonna pump 500 watts of solar into it and we'll see, does it make any noise? All right, it seems we found silent mode. I am pushing 500 watts in on turbo mode via solar and the fans are not running at all. It is absolutely silent, it's making no noise whatsoever. So when you're charging with solar, you won't hear a thing. Next test is gonna be simultaneous charging. Can you charge it from AC and DC at the same time? In other words, can you charge it from wall or grid power and solar at the same time for a faster speed? Some of these will let you charge them faster if you plug them into two charging sources at the same time. So let's go ahead and plug this into AC power first. We'll let it max out at its 1460 watts. And then we're gonna go ahead and pump 500 watts of solar and now when I say solar I mean virtual solar this simulates solar because all solar panel is is a basically a power supply now again I'm doing this on turbo mode so it's going to provide the fastest charging possible we're at 1460 watts let's plug the solar in and see what happens now this is the amount of amps coming out so right now it's zero because obviously I'm not plugged in when I plug this in watch this number and you'll get to see how much solar is actually going into this while AC is going in at the same time. So I hear a click, I see the solar panel icon come up. It's doing a little recalibration here, but it's doing 60 volts at eight amps. And 60 volts times 8.3 amps is 500 watts. So it is accepting 500 watts of solar, but very interestingly, it's not charging any faster. It says 1480 watts. So it's not really doing anything to help the speed, but what it's doing is called solar priority mode. So a lot of these power stations try to be eco-friendly. So when you have it plugged into an AC source, let's assume that there's a gas generator or something on the other side instead of wall power, say you're running a gas generator and you wanna save as much fuel as possible. So you plug this into your gas generator, the gas generator will put less power in because it's allowing solar priority. It's pumping 500 watts in from solar and the rest is coming in from AC power. So it lowers the amount of power that you use from the wall or the amount of power that you use from say a gas or propane generator. So it's like just an eco thing, it's not, really allowing you to charge it any faster, but it does allow you to at least prioritize solar. So what about 12 volt output? Now the AC180 only offers a single 12 volt cigarette lighter socket output with no other outputs really. So let's test that and make sure you can at least get 10 amps out of it, which is what it's rated for. Now you can see here the voltage is 13.6 volts. I know it's rounded down a little bit, but it's outputting 13.6 volts. I have it set at 10 amps if I hit on so you can see it's pulling 10 amps at 12.4 volts so it definitely passes this test okay so what about wireless charging i do have my cell phone up here which supports fast wireless charging which is up to 15 watts okay so all you have to do is turn on the dc and that turns on the wireless charging now interestingly it is not fast wireless charging it's actually slow wireless charging it says it's going to take like two hours to charge my phone so the wireless charger that's built into this does not support fast charging even though it does say it's a 15 watt wireless charger it is pulling 10 watts now i've used other fast charging power stations and it'll pull 14 15 watts it'll say on my phone fast charging right now it just says charging it doesn't say anything about being fast and two hours really isn't that fast but it's better than a lot of the competition it doesn't have a wireless charger at all now what about usb charging this does offer a 100 watt power delivery output it's output only you can't send power into the usb ports on this i do have a power bin hooked up here which can accept 100 watts of power delivery charging from a USB source. You can see right here, it's actually outputting 94 watts into the power bed. Now there's always a couple watts loss. So it does support 100 watt charging. 
And why this is important is a lot of MacBooks, high-end laptops do require at least 60 watts, sometimes 100 watts of power delivery charging. In fact, this is my favorite way to charge my laptop. It's super efficient going from DC to DC instead of using your brick that comes with your laptop to plug it into, say, this. So when you plug it into this, you actually lose a lot of extra power charging your laptop than you would just charging it with a USB cable. So if your laptop supports USB charging, absolutely use it. And that goes for any mobile device, really. Always use the DC option if you can. It saves power rather than plugging your Apple charger in here. Plug it into the DC port, the USB port, and it's way more efficient. So what about pass-through charging? Can you charge it while you use it? It's 2023. Of course you can. Of course I'm going to prove it. Now, Blue Eddy does include what's called a UPS feature. Basically, they use a UPS relay, a switching relay, to allow you to take power from the wall, pass it through the power station without touching the batteries, pass it through to your load, which in this case is a laptop with no battery in it. There's no battery in the bottom. You can see this is where the battery is supposed to go. It's powered directly from this power supply. You can see the little green light. This is actually plugged into the inverter on the AC180. And then the power coming in from the wall going into this is going through the switch box. So I could quickly switch it on and off so I don't have to keep plugging and unplugging. So what we're gonna do here is I'm going to show you what happens if you're on your computer. Now this could be a PC, it could be any kind of appliance that you have plugged into this. Does the AC180 switch over fast enough to keep a computer going during a blackout? And that's a very important test because because the UPS relay, if it's not fast enough and your computer dies, you can corrupt your data, should switch fast enough if it's 20 milliseconds or less. So we'll have to see. I'm not sure what Blue Eddy's claim is because it doesn't say anything in the book about this feature. So place your bets. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the switch. That's gonna cut off the power from the wall. Let's see if the laptop stays on or not. I don't know, I've never done this yet. So let's, let's place our bets. Ready? Three, two, one. Guess what, folks? The laptop's still running. You can see that the power from the wall is now zero. The laptop is taking 26 watts. Let's turn the power back on. Okay, and it's now charging from the grid again. Laptop is still on. Let's go ahead and just repeat the test real quick. Three, two, one. Okay, no problem. So the laptop is staying on. Now, just to prove to you that the laptop is plugged into the power station, I'll go ahead and unplug it. So what about pass through with solar? Let's go ahead and charge it with solar. So here we are charging with our simulated solar. DC turns on, AC turns on. So you can use DC, USB, and AC all at the same time if you're charging from solar. Now, now you have to understand it because you can only input 500 watts into this port. You can't pull more than 500 watts in the power station without it using the battery. Now don't confuse pass-through with the UPS feature. The UPS feature can actually handle 1800 watts, which is the inverter that's built in. So once you exceed 1800 watts, it's gonna shut down the inverter and knock your laptops or computers or whatever else you have offline. So you don't wanna exceed 1800 watts using the UPS feature. Musician's favorite amp interference test. This is where we determine, is the inverter on the Blue Eddy clean enough to power a power amp without making weird buzzy clicky noises. So go ahead and place your bets. Will it or will it not buzz? Three, two, one. Wah, wah. That's so annoying, I gotta turn it off. So yeah, that's a big fail from the inverter. Now, you have to remember, this is a budget product. They're using budget parts. They have a budget inverter in here. They're trying to keep the cost as low as possible for you guys, because we are in a financial situation. And a lot of people don't want to spend two or $3,000 on a power station. You're spending way less than a thousand bucks on this. And I do have those iron ferrite things. I got two here, two on the other side. They don't really do anything when it comes to interference through the core. But I know if I don't have them on here, I get a million complaints that you got to put the iron ferrite on here or otherwise it's gonna buzz. Well, I'm telling you, it's never made any difference and I've done this test 50 times now. Unfortunately, it fails the amp interference test. That means do not buy the AC180. If you plan to rock out in your band or use it for a PA system or ham radio use, this probably is not gonna be the product for you unless you just don't mind that buzzing noise. So what about the app? I've shown the Blue ID app several times, but I'll do a quick 30 second run through. You can see input output watts, solar, AC, DC, 
Uh, you can turn on and off the inverter and the DC source down here it does have battery pack. Of course, the AC180 doesn't support external batteries. When you go into the settings, it allows you to share device, turn on and off eco modes, which basically all that does is it powers the, the unit down after so many hours. I, I leave that crap off. You can see here charging mode. This is where you set it to turbo, normal, or silent. Now power lifting is the feature that allows you to run a higher wattage appliance and lowers the voltage. It can actually destroy appliances, so I leave it off. You can use this feature for like coffee pots and things that just have a heating element, but never use this for anything that's got like a compressor in it, like a refrigerator or an air conditioner, because you could seriously ruin your appliance. This is where you do the firmware upgrade. Now I do have the upgrade done on this, and I always do the firmware upgrade before I test any of these things. And that's all she wrote. So what do I think about the AC-180? I have to say that I applaud Blue Eddy for getting back to its roots. The recent AC-60 release, which is a super fancy waterproof battery expandable power station is a fantastic innovative product. However, the biggest complaint that I got on that review was that it's just too darn expensive. Here we have a back to the basics, good old fashioned power station without all the bells and whistles that the rest of the lineup has. It's also in the perfect Goldilocks sweet zone of 1200 watt hours paired with an 1800 watt inverter. It means it'll run virtually any 110 volt kitchen appliance, including refrigerators, air conditioners, heaters, instant pot skillets, and even large microwave ovens without a sweat. It's also still very tossable at this size and weight since it's well under 40 pounds. You can virtually take it anywhere. So I think Blue Eddy really hit it out of the park with this model and this thing's gonna sell like hotcakes. Let's not forget it does offer that 20 millisecond switching UPS relay, which is fast enough to keep a computer and other computerized electronic equipment going in a blackout, which is something their aging AC200P just can't do. That being said, it's not a perfect offering. I'm sure some folks are gonna miss that 25 amp DC output that's offered on the AC200 series and that 30 amp RV hookup on the AC200 Max. You notice they didn't include an RV hookup on this. They certainly could have squeezed it in, but again, cost cutting features. There's also only one USB-C port and no quick charge ports, again, save a few bucks here, pass it on to the customer. But that's exactly what the AC180 is all about. It's about keeping that price as low as possible so more people like you can afford it. Just think of this as the Big Mac of power stations. Now, every single video, people ask me how long certain appliances will run on these power stations, and I really can't answer that question because every appliance is different. But let's say you're gonna plug in a standard, medium size Energy Star rated household refrigerator that consumes about 700 watt hours a day, and that's pretty standard. You can simply use some basic math to take the watt hours of the power station divided by 700 watt hours, and that basic math gives us 1.6 days of runtime. Now, let's take an example of a standard microwave that uses 1800 watts. You can expect about a half hour runtime on this. A 1000 watt skillet or instant pot, you can expect about an hour. A 1500 watt Keurig coffee machine will run for about 45 minutes straight, which should give you enough coffee to keep you awake from now until you actually receive your AC 180 in the mail. So hopefully this answers your questions about runtime. Product price, and this is where things get good. The AC 180 is launching today at the stupid low price of only $799. Now this is for 1152 watt hours and an 1800 watt inverter. Now this stupid low price is only good through the month of June and then it's gonna bump up to the mid 800 buck range for a short time and finally land around 950 bucks, which I think is still a fair price considering this does have an 1800 watt inverter that can run virtually anything in your house. But wait, there's more because Blue Eddie of course offered me a discount code that will knock a few more bucks off, but that code's only gonna be good through the month of June. And then they're gonna nix it and you're gonna be paying whatever you gotta pay. So if you're waffling on getting the AC 180, don't find yourself disintegrating in a vat of syrup while you make up your mind because that $7.99 price is only good for a very short time. Now what about the competition? 
Uh, obviously, if I don't mention the EcoFlow Delta II, I'll get flamed in the comments. That is the direct competitor to the AC180, and they offer a smaller one kilowatt hour battery, but does match the 1800 watt inverter. However, the EcoFlow is selling for 200 bucks more, and that's a big deal when you're only paying 799. While the Delta II does offer an expandable battery, not everybody wants to use that feature, and that costs a lot of money to implement. And the EcoFlow battery is so overly expensive and it can't even be charged on its own, making the whole battery expansion thing virtually moot. You essentially get better USB support on the EcoFlow in trade for the wireless charging on the Blue Eddy and another 200 bucks in your pocket. That makes the AC180 the clear winner here. Now, as for recommended solar, I do recommend sticking with Blue Eddy panels, especially if you're on the move. If you're always traveling with this, running it around, setting it up, just spend the extra money on the good folding panels. They're high quality, high output, and I've had no problems with mine, and I actually use mine in the rain dirt and dust of the desert. Now you can either get a pair of their PV200 panels and put them in series that will charge this really fast or just get a single PV350. It really depends on how much you want to spend. However, if you want a more permanent solution that's actually lower cost, I would recommend the Bouge RV 180 watt or 200 watt solar panels or the Renogy 300 watt glass panels which can be found on hobotech.tv slash Amazon under solar kits. Of course, I have that link in the description of this video. So if you're interested in the AC180, the link and discount code will be in the description of this video below. I'm also gonna put a link right here at the bottom of the screen that you can type in manually, along with a QR code you can scan on a mobile device that'll take you on over to the Blue Eddy store page where you can check out the newest bang for the buck power station on the market, the AC180. Thanks for watching. If you learned something today, don't forget to give me that thumbs up below. And if you're not a subscriber already, you know what to do. That's it for now. Till next time. Odin commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box. Okay, I just found out that Blue Eddy is launching the AC-180 one full day earlier than what they told me two weeks ago. So now I have to be in a mad rush to finish this for launch. And that means, of course, lots and lots of coffee because I'm probably gonna be up till about 5 a.m. to do this video. So cheers. Let's get started. RV Golf Guy, Brian Lee, Bruce Johnson, Jason Sirocco, Mark Steve Eisenberg.